So good afternoon. I'm uh, delighted we have a special speaker with us, uh, Governor Murphy. Uh, he's a uh, extremely strong supporter of public higher education. He's uh, articulated a strategy to make uh, New Jersey an innovation leader in the United States. Please join me in welcoming the Honorable Phil Murphy. Good afternoon. Thank you, thank you. Honored to be here. I woke up this morning in Atlantic City, which is another story, um, but I woke up with literally no voice, and I came within a hair of having to, um, having to uh, beg your forgiveness, and I, the fastest doctor appointment I could get was at the hospital. Uh, so thanks to the New Jersey State Troopers and other colleagues, we got to the hospital, the doctor said, I know exactly, because I feel fine, by the way, I just lost, literally lost my voice. doctor said, um, <clears throat> I got exactly what you need. I'm going to give you a little bit of uh, steroid. I'm going to inject it. That'll get through the system faster, uh, and uh, you'll be back on your feet. I said, thank God. And by the way, I had a, I had a speech to give at 1 o'clock today, a 30-minute speech, a, a big annual speech, at something called the League of Municipalities. He gives me the shot, hurt like heck. Uh, I said, Doc, I can't thank you enough. I said, when do you think this is going to kick in? <clears throat> and he said, uh, quickly, I don't think any longer than 72 hours. <laughs> I said, oh, man, am I screwed. <laughs> any event, uh, he, uh, he did the ultimate act of uh, uh, under-promising and over-delivering. So here I am. So thanks for having me. Um, let me... Uh, let me... Uh, let me say a couple things. First of all, I brought the, IQ, the average IQ in this room uh, down 18 points as I walked in the door. Uh, let me start also by noting how refreshing it is to be in a place where any talk of whether one person or another is the smartest person in the room is actually a quantitative debate. <laughs> Trust me, it does not work that way in politics. Thank you for the honor uh, of allowing me to join you and to be part of DIMAC's 30th anniversary conference. I have to give a special shout out to one person in, in particular who reached out to me about being here today many months ago, uh, Professor Dennis Egan over there in the corner, who is, follow me now, the brother of my brother-in-law. So Dennis's brother, uh, Brendan, is married to my sister, Dottie. And it's hard to believe this, Denny, but you and Jane and I met 48 years ago. Um, so uh, it's great to be here, and thanks for reaching out, and love to everybody. And by the way, I'm, I'm not here merely for purposes of keeping the family peace, uh, you know, <laughs> with Thanksgiving coming up and all that jazz. I, I, it's actually much deeper than that, which I'll get into in a moment. Uh, before I do, I want to thank uh, Dean Peter March, Director Fred Roberts, uh, Chancellor Chris Malloy. Are you here? Is Chris here? I didn't see him. Chris has been a great ally of ours, the whole Rutgers family, fellow New Jerseyans. Uh, out of staters, welcome to the Federal Republic of New Jersey. It's great to have you, uh, and it, it, I'm really honored to be here. Um, I'm, I'm going to venture a guess that you haven't had many governors attend in prior uh, years, and if that's true, I think that's a shame. Um, to be honest, I look at things a little bit differently than many of my pre predecessors, and I see the direct connectivity between the research and academic pursuits undertake it at DIMAX and the economic future of our state. I've said it many times that this state was Silicon Valley before there was a Silicon Valley. And there's a reason uh, why names like Edison and Einstein and places like Bell Labs and Sarnoff Labs and, and yes, DIMAX are synonymous with New Jersey. Quite simply, it's because we always took scientific and mathematical research and its applicability to the real world and connection to the real economy seriously. And because we did, so much of our modern world has its underpinnings uh, right here in the Garden State, both the theoretical modern world and the practical modern world. Somewhere along the line over the past couple of decades, but I'd say in particular over the past decade, at least the one that preceded our administration, a couple of years ago, we kind of forgot that part of our history. And thankfully, DIMAX did not. So I'm here not just to wish you a happy birthday and pretend to understand some of the concepts being discussed today, and I emphasize the word 
pretend I was the uh, originally scheduled to lead the mathematical biology and health, health section, um, which is not true, of course. I'm here because ensuring a deep pipeline of future talent that will keep DIMAX strong is also key to our fully reclaiming New Jersey's mantle as the global center for innovation. We like to call New Jersey now, New Jersey, the state of innovation. Now granted, math will probably not top many grade schoolers' lists of favorite subjects, and if you'll pardon the pun, uh, they won't necessarily be discreet about that either. But in our, just making sure you're paying attention, but in our economy, something is happening. We're seeing some of the fastest job growth in areas that require a core understanding of math and computer science. This applies in many fields that have been discussed or will be discussed here today. Cybersecurity, public health, environmental applications, robotics, artificial intelligence, and on. And also in fields that traditionally have not been as technology oriented. The one, that is one reason rather I created the position of chief innovation officer for our state to make sure we are prepared for and foster innovation not just in the high-tech spaces, but in all that we do. We all know that beyond your work and research are many, many real-world applications for these fields of study. They are the applications that in many ways will guide our future economy. Promoting New Jersey as a home for academic and technological uh, research, development, and commercialization is something we take very seriously. Certainly being home to a renowned research center like DIMAX is a real feather in our cap, a real badge of honor. But what's more important is how we spin off the work being done here in ways that will be truly transformational. It's one of the major reasons uh, I was proud last year to enact the legislation that reestablished the New Jersey Commission on Science, Innovation, and Technology. And it is why we also launched the Research with NJ online portal to bring together our world-class institutions of higher education with world-class entrepreneurs and researchers. So as the jobs of tomorrow are being discussed here, across today and tomorrow, we're doing more to help see those jobs actually be created. Many of you probably all, all already know this statistic. It's one I've mentioned many times before as governor and, and it never gets less mind-boggling for me. The, the nonprofit code.org noted that in 2015, last time we had this information, when the college classes of 2019 were high school seniors, New Jersey had nearly 23,000 open jobs in computer science. Yet in 2015, the same year, we produced barely 1,100 graduates capable of filling them. That's not even meeting 5% of the need. And if not, and it's not that there aren't the students who could excel in these fields either, but across our state, and for too many students, the curriculum and advanced placement classes that could lead more of our young people into a STEM career pathway simply haven't existed. And mostly they haven't existed in urban districts with high numbers of minority students. Which leads me to another eye-opening fact. In 2016, the next year, research by Google and Gallup on the diversity gap in computer science reported that African-American and Latino students were one and a half to nearly two times more likely than their white peers to have an interest in computer science. Yet these students are less likely to have a dedicated computer science classroom available to them. This data is reflected right here in New Jersey. Only, I'll give you another one, only one quarter of our AP computer science test takers are female. And roughly one, only one in seven, one in seven are minority students. And this is inarguably, by many measures, the most diverse American state. And I note that in your program earlier this afternoon, I believe, there was a session called Broadening Participation in STEM. And I would say, in this respect, I suspect that in many, uh, we're all born under the same star. Now, in response to this reality, our administration has made opening doors to STEM-based careers to all students a leading priority. 
through the state budget process, we have awarded $2 million in grants to more than two dozen, two dozen school districts to create or expand their computer science offerings. <clears throat> By the way, when I finally was able to speak, someone made an observation that I sounded like Lauren Bacall. Um, <laughs> I'm a big Lauren Bacall fan, don't get me wrong, but I also know to this person she has passed away, so I hope they weren't uh, predicting anything. Um, just wanted to get that off my chest as well. We've also convened a computer science advisory board to set statewide standards that will guide our future efforts to ensure the availability of strong computer sci science programs for every student. And we are bringing together department staff, K through 12 and post-secondary computer science educators and computer science stakeholders from leading organizations like code.org and the SANS Institute. Just a few weeks ago, I announced our five-point computer science state plan, a set of strategic goals that we've already begun to undertake alongside our schools and stakeholders. Through this initiative, we will establish rigorous statewide standards for computer science education in all grades to provide a framework for equitable access for all students for a, uh, to a K through 12 computer science program. We will set clear and achievable goals to deliver professional development and training for computer science for educators so we could grow and sustain the K through 12 computer science programs. And we will establish clear certification pathways for computer science teachers, bless you, to strengthen, we don't miss a thing up here, to strengthen the education pipeline and increase the number of educators prepared to teach computer science. What we want to build is a future where a center like DIMAX can tap into a pipeline chock full of homegrown New Jersey talent to continue its mission and where employers will also be able to tap into that pipeline for the women and men whose jobs it will be to help bring new concepts to life and to the marketplace. I want to go off script, if I can, for a second to give you a little bit more color for a minute or two on how we see our state uh, and, and how I see it as, as the chief executive of this state. And, and, and a good parable to share with you is uh, in September, we made a state visit to India. We spent seven days uh, in India uh, and covered six cities and worked about 18 hours a day. It was the third country we, uh, we visited as an official state visit matter since I've been governor of the first two, Israel uh, and Germany, where I am the former US was the former US ambassador. Uh, all three trips were successful, but India was a notable success. And so, and we, we got, we did some culture, some politics, but it was mostly about jobs and investment. And we announced we brought back, I think, 1,250 jobs, and I think there were thousands behind those 1,250 that will come. And India, matches up really well with New Jersey. By the way, as to Israel and Germany, in some cases for similar and other, in some cases for other reasons. But India in particular, with its strength in life sciences, biotech, pharmaceutical, technology, telecom, is a, is a no-brainer uh, for New Jersey given who we are. And so when I sell New Jersey as I sold in India, although I use these words in New Jersey, around the United States, around the world, but they particularly resonated in, in India. And I should say we've got one of the largest Indian communities of any American state, and by far the largest as a percentage of our population. And because we're the densest state in the nation, any community is more deeply felt here than, say, Texas, which actually has more uh, members of the Indian community, but it's got a lot more people and a lot more space. So the communities in our state jump out at you. Uh, much more, and for those who live here, you'll, you'll know what I mean. The Indian community in particular has a huge nexus right here in Middlesex County where we are. In any event, the two words I use to sell the state of New Jersey uh, to folks anywhere in the world are talent and location. So I'll just say on location, uh, we, we have a location that 49 other states would die to have. We got here first, we're not giving it up. Uh, and. Uh, and we have, to, we have to use our density to our advantage. So one of the things that got wrecked before we got here, for anyone who takes NJ Transit, you'll know that getting NJ Transit right is not a nice thing to do. It's existentially important to the densest state in the nation that sits beside the largest market in the world on one side, one of the fastest growing markets in the country on the other. We've got to be able to move people around 
and things around our state and across the rivers better than any other American state. And I don't, I'm a Democrat. I don't think it's Democrat, Republican, Communist, Martian. We just got to do that. Play the damn hand you were dealt. And for reasons I will never understand, we did not play that hand. So we will fix NJ Transit if it kills me, and it might. Um, <clears throat> but the real reason I wanted to talk for a second was about talent. Uh, and we measure our talent. We're, we ooze talent. I think you got to look in the mirror if you're a person, if you're a, a, a university, if you're a company, if you're a state, and be honest with yourself about who you are and what your real strengths and weaknesses are. So I look in the New Jersey mirror, I'd like to think we can make automobiles again in New Jersey. I'll die trying, but I ain't going to hold my breath. But what I see is the innovation economy, and I see talent and location as underpinning those. And so on talent, it's, it, I, I have to get a couple of points of great pride off my chest. We have the highest concentration per square mile of scientists and engineers in the world, in the world in New Jersey. We were just rated in September. We finally beat Massachusetts, which is the state I was born in. Please don't hold that against me. Uh, we have the number one public education system in America. We are number one based on uh, uh, SAT subject tests, number one in physics number two in chemistry. We lead the nation by a country mile, as they say, in K through 12 kids who take a foreign language. So not only are we in many respects the most diverse American state, but I think that statistic tells you a lot about our mindset and our curiosity. So when you're in India or Israel or Germany, people look at that and they say, you know what? That feels like a place uh, that, is, that is welcoming. Uh, our diversity we wear is a badge of honor. So it's why we invest historic amounts in public education over the past couple of years. It's why we have computer science for all. It's why we have a STEM loan forgiveness program that we're piloting. Uh, it's why we care deeply about deepening the relationship between Rutgers and the real economy, between Princeton and the real economy, NJIT and the real economy, and the other institutions of higher education. Uh, we're, we're ripping pages out of the Boston and Northern California playbooks. And we want to we wanna once again own that arc of theoretical research to applied research to commercialization. Uh, that's, that's a space that we used to dominate unlike, unlike almost any American state or anywhere else in the world. We're still really good at it, but I want us to get back and punch at the weight we used to punch at. I'll leave you with one last thought. We have an enormous amount of focus on startups. And that also gets back into, uh, into relationships with institutions of higher ed. So for instance, we're talking at length with Rutgers and Princeton and other organizations about developing the hub, which is going to fill in that big hole in the middle of New Brunswick uh, over time. Uh, so you get uh, institutions, big research institutions of higher ed. You get healthcare, as an example, providers, big corporates, but you also get co-working space incubators, and you get into that sort of virtual one plus one equals three uh, reality. New Jersey has been able historically to hold its own on large companies either staying here or coming here. But where we really suffered and took our eye off the ball is the startup culture. And I view that inexorably linked to the researchers, the research institutions, to the folks such as yourselves in this room. So we are all in on taking advantage of our location and we'll continue to do so. And we are hyper all in on making sure that no place in America, if not the world, can touch our talent, both the current generation and the generations to come. So as I say, in addition to family ties, I told you there's a deeper reason I was with you today. This is how New Jersey reclaims its title as the global heart of innovative research. It's how we connect the dots that lead from Edison and Einstein to Bell Labs and Sarnoff Labs to DIMAX and beyond and to our future. A future that I'm sure will see DIMAX as a fixture for at least, I hope, another 30 if not 300 years. I appreciate enormously your taking the time out of your proceedings to hear me out. I wish you nothing but the best for a successful remainder of the conference. Again, to everyone at DIMAX, Happy 30th birthday, and thank you all so much for having me.